So uh, it is a welcome back and a welcome back to Mark and Sienna. Uh, Sienna, now, you have met Mark Wahlberg before. I've met Mark before, just around and about, yes. Didn't you meet him at the Golden Globes? I haven't, well, I, I haven't told you this story, and he doesn't know it. I, I did see He you, might know it. I did see you at the Golden Globes, and I had had a baby six months before, and I was breastfeeding my child, and you very sweetly gave me a big hug, and you don't know, but I lactated on your <laughs> Milk. It definitely went. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you remember that, Mark? No, yeah, I, I, I had really no public. idea. But you know, it's yeah. the Golden Globe, so anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, really. they're lactating. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you look scared. You can bill me for dry cleaning. Uh, but Tom, uh, new to Hollywood. This is all brand new. Yeah, well, I've, I've watched your show so much, I feel like I know you, Graham. <laughs> um, but no, this is surreal to me. This is a, was, my life has flipped upside down in the last six weeks. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic, because, Mark, you had this uh, when, you know, you made it big, you went to Hollywood, and, I mean, it's been kind of documented in Entourage, but what advice would you have for Tom Holland? Well, he, I'm the last person who should ask for advice. <laughs> but ha you, you've never been to jail, have you? I have never been to jail. <laughs> See, that's Loser. The thing. It's a complete role reversal. See, I went to jail before I had a career, so he's going to go to jail at some point during your career. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, don't take any advice from me. The first check I got, I ran to the Mercedes dealer. I bought a car. I didn't have money for registration or insurance. The police towed the vehicle because I was driving without insurance. So you don't want any advice from me. But I did the LA's the move. Get a jacuzzi. I just met all your brothers. Bring the boys to Cali. <laughs> You got an excuse and go, have some fun, dude. Oh, I will. Have some fun for me. Oh, I will. I'm 26 years old. I'm married. I got four kids. I get yelled at and I, they tell me how much they hate me. <laughs> they give me a daddy, I love you, you're the best dad ever. Father's Day card, which is nice, right? And that works. And that's a beautiful thing. But go have some fun. <laughs> you're a young, good looking guy. That's terrible advice, but I hear you. Uh, <laughs> Listen to business. Mark Wahlberg, you bring us the new Transformers movie, Transformers The Last Night. Uh, yeah, the last yeah. one. People are looking forward to it. Uh, it opens next Friday, June 23rd. Now, this time, so Optimus Prime is sort of slightly out of the picture this time. So you team up with uh, other humans to yes. try and save the world. Yes. Discuss. Uh, well, <laughs> um, initially, you know, um, we kind of pick up after the second story. I've now gone on my own, or the, my first story. Uh, we've gone, I've gone on my own. I've left my daughter so she could kind of integrate back into society and have a normal life. And I'm living out in the middle of the desert, and all of a sudden I'm tracked down by Sir Anthony Hopkins' character, who brings me to London, great fish out of water story, connects me with this uh, professor from Oxford, played by Laura Haddock, who's fantastic. And uh, then we're basically trying to figure out how the relationship with the, with the uh, robots and the humans started. So it's a bit of an origin story. It's a lot of mythology. And, uh, and then it's uh, chaos ensues. But this is the last one. This is the last Transformers. Michael Bay now has vowed that th this is it. Transformed. So, yes, yeah, so I get my life back. <laughs> Well, so we've got a clip where uh, Anthony Hopkins is introducing you to the, the Laura Haddock's character. Oh, cool. For a British audience, uh, lots of this film is set here. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I learned a lot about England. I just learned who that woman was that you made a joke about, the Prime Minister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, who is that? Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, you may not have to remember her name from. for long, but yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't hold on to it tightly. Um, but now, the, the Stonehenge in the film... Did you really film in Stonehenge? Yeah, but we built another Stonehenge right down the street. Was it was better? So, well, it was the same thing. They were so precious about it. We were just blowing it up. But it's like, what, what happened there? What's the big deal? <laughs> Somebody laid a rock on top of a rock, and is that how Anthony got his knighthood? I mean, if I want, I want, I, I want my knighthood, I should be able to, right? I've... But, you, but you did film around the real one as well. Yeah. Which is incredible that they gave you access. I know you weren't. Like, I know you're not impressed. You're thinking like yeah. they should open a McDonald's. Why? Why is it so special? I, yeah, I could open one, uh, build one of those in my backyard. I mean, what, what, what happened there? We're all like, <laughs> but really, it's devastating. No, no, yeah. no. The reason why we're proud of stuff. No, no. But the thing is, we're, but the reason why we're not answering is we don't know what happened. Yeah, no. <laughs> 
got the stones. <laughs> it's so English. They somehow got those really heavy stones there. Well, from like how did, Italy or something, How did right? they build, the, the Egyptians build the pyramids? It's, that, that's it's more impressive. You know, it's our English our version of... Well, at least you can go in there. There are things you could bury people there. You could do a lot of things with the yeah. tomb. But what do you do there? Can I just say, you you're in our country. Yeah. You are a guest. I have the utmost respect. And you will like our half-built thing. I want to bring <laughs> jobs. I want to bring restaurants, <laughs> wall burgers, all these things. But, wall burgers. But what, wall burgers. what are the stones about? Seriously. It's we don't pagan, know. That's what thing. makes them so great. <laughs> How did they get there? How did they get there as part of it? And it's a pagan worship. A thing. lot of people Druids. carried them and stood them up. And Thank they, you, Dr. They Wall Wall for shade. <laughs> they them for shade. I mean, what? No. Shade. They, they, with, with the sun. With the sun and the calendar of the Druid. Stop now, Sienna, nice quickly, stop now. There'll be letters, there'll be letters. The, be yeah, letter. so. uh, but with this film, becoming part of the Transformers family, I, I think you assumed would give you some cred with your, your kids, but you were sort of upstaged at the time. This was the first Transformers you did. Well, they just had no interest in being there. They want to see the movie, but there was other things that they wanted to be doing. They wanted to do anything else other than watching me work. <laughs> and I, I asked Michael, and Michael's really excited about putting them in the movie, and they were just not into it at all. <laughs> they were like, no. I'm like, everybody's here. The crew's waiting. We set up this big, elaborate shot to make sure that this is going to be a shot that's in the movie. And so now you only saw one of my kids in the movie, and now the other kids are upset. They think it's my fault. Like, I purposely had them cut out because they didn't do exactly what I wanted to do, which is not the case. But it's, it's a no-win situation, so just know that. And now, one of your... One of your daughters has started dating. Is this right? <sighs> She, kid. Well, you know, so the kid... The boyfriend. Yeah. Well, yeah. she had one that was not a nice boy, and it was like, they were just, it's innocent enough, but I was like, so this kid, I want to meet this kid. So I'm like, okay, I want to meet him. You want to hang out with him? I want to meet him, and then you can hang out with him in a safe environment. She's like, what's a safe environment, Dad? And everything is the attitude. So all of a sudden, this kid comes over, and he one-ups me. He brings his mom. <laughs> No, the genius thing is he's so sweet. And she is, like, steamrolling me all the time. And then he, like, he's seeing that, like, she's being rude to me, she's being mean to me. I'm like, if you're not nice to him, he might not want to be hanging around with you. And this is, a, this is a keeper. This dude is really nice. He's cool. He went to the graduation. He just graduated last week. He went to the graduation with us. He's, like, really sweet. I'm like, okay, well, the, the, the perfect scenario is to find one boy who she's with forever, and will treat her like a princess, <laughs> but I don't know if she could hold him down. <laughs> you know? but, then you... but he did one-up me. I was, like, ready. I had the whole thing. I had a couple of my buddies there. All of a sudden, him and his mom come in. I'm like, hey. <laughs> wow, so what do you do at school? Do you have any extracurricular activities? He's like, he's like just completely just slap me. And now you... Because it, it's rare in, in America, but you, one of your daughters goes to an all-girls school. She's it? now going to an all-girls Catholic school. Was this your idea? <laughs> uh, it was my preference. <laughs> but, and I won that one because I kind of manipulated her. She got into both schools that she applied, but she ultimately made the choice. Okay. And she made the right one. I don't mean to... I don't mean to undermine your confidence in that system, but Sienna Miller, you went to an all-girls school, <laughs> yeah, didn't you? my whole life. And, uh, yeah, what, what goes on, Sienna? <laughs> No, I, there is an argument. <laughs> I'm not the right person to ask. I think oh, you are. You are absolutely I mean, the right person. I mean, naked, streaking across the lacrosse pitch, kissing the gardener, <laughs> lots of fags, booze. <laughs> you know, repression, because you're kept in an environment and then you're let out yeah. on weekends and a boy is an exciting thing because you don't see them every day. But it's okay. Where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> To all girls boarding school from eight. But Tom, you did the proper British thing. You went to an all boys school. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Were you well behaved? No, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, for, oddly, for Spider Man, they sent you back to school. Uh, well, it was a it was a joke. They, they don't obviously understand my British sarcasm. I said, wouldn't it be funny if I went to an American high school undercover to see what it would be like to be an American high schooler? And Marvel were like, that's amazing. Let's set it up. Wow. So. <laughs> Six weeks later, I'm like with a backpack, really? pencil case books, on my way to the school, the Bronx School of Science, oh, which is a school for genius kids. And believe me, everyone, I am not no genius. <laughs> um, 
And yeah, so I enrolled in a high school for three days. I had like an accent, a fake name, a backstory. What and was they, your fake name? Ben Perkins, who's my acting coach okay. from when I was a kid. But they paired me with um, a kid called Arun, and I was supposed to be his brother or something like that. And Arun is an Indian kid. And when I came in, everyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're just distant brothers from, you know, whoo. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, this is a science school. They can figure yeah, things out. Like, no, no, no way that works. That doesn't work. Uh, but, didn't you, but then you did... Did you confide in oh, some yeah. people? <laughs> so I was sitting next to this very pretty girl in class, and you have to go through an exam process to get into this school, which obviously I didn't do. Um, and she's like, hey, man, what's your deal? How are you here? I was like, well, let me tell you my secret. I'm actually, um, Undercover. I'm actually Spider-Man. <laughs> She's like, dude, you're fucking nuts, bro. What? <laughs> really? And I'm like, no, seriously, I'm Spider-Man. Obviously, none of my movies had come out. No one knew about it. It was a big secret. So I just looked like some nutter <laughs> that showed up for three days and then disappeared. <laughs> yeah, she's laughing now. She's like, yeah. oh, you yeah, had him right there in the background. <laughs> Right, let's talk about it. Uh, Tom's much anticipated return as Spider Man in Spider Man Homecoming. It opens July the 5th. And I say return because obviously this film sort of picks up where uh, Captain America's Civil War stops. Yes, yeah, it's interesting because you get to see sort of Peter Parker and Spider Man on summer camp. You know, he's hanging out with the Avengers, he's having the time of his life, he gets to do the, be a part of this amazing fight scene, and then it cuts to him back at school on a cramped subway, miserable, wishing that he could be with the Avengers traveling the world. Um, so it's a nice sort of setback to what we saw in Civil War. And it's, it, this is kind of, it's, it goes sort of back to the comic books more, doesn't it? Because he's a proper uh, high school student. Yeah, it really is the story of a kid, you know. I, I genuinely think if you gave a 15-year-old superpowers, he would have the time of his life. So the movie is all about sort of him enjoying himself, juggling, you know, talking to girls, struggling with his homework, but also being a superhero at the same time. All right, listen, we'll talk about it more, but let's see a clip. This is uh, one of your best friends in, in the film discovering okay, okay. that you are, in fact, Spider-Man. Yes. Tom, obviously being Spider-Man, you've got to be in amazing shape. But they did weird things to you. I don't know if you have... Oh, yeah. What's the electric thing? Have you ever heard of this EMS training? It's like a, you wear this sort of, like, black suit and they put these pads on you and you basically do, like, a yoga class while they electrocute you. <laughs> and I, it's It's awful. like muscle stimulation. Yeah, it's like muscle yeah. stimulation, but you <laughs> work like... out while you use it. I basically cheated. Um, but I did it with my best friend, and every time the trainer would go to the bathroom, one of us would crank up the machine that my friend was using, and you can't, like, you genuinely can't move. Like, it, like, makes every part of your body shake, and it's awful. It's a lot of fun, and it works, but it really is the worst thing I've ever done. I've never heard of that. That's... Yeah. Have you... No, but I saw a commercial today on TV here with Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. right, who's yeah. probably one of the most physical specimens on the planet with this ab machine and this bicep machine standing there in his underwear and he's just going like this, shaking with his eyes closed. And <laughs> I don't think that's how he got in shape. <laughs> uh, <laughs> somebody sitting there on their couch, stuffing their face, having a pint, he's going to be like, oh yeah, well now I figured it out. I can <laughs> buy one of those. It's not happening. Because Sienna, no, the only film we could think of where <laughs> you might have had to do this was uh, G.I. Joe. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to do all this stuff to get ready for that? I, they cast me in that film without meeting me and it might have been an error because I played the villain and there's nothing that threatening physically about me or active particularly but I um really you sprayed me with breast milk <laughs> <laughs> stand back <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no I I I did some fight training and and tried my best but I was not cut out for like the violence I had to shoot a gun and, uh, and I couldn't do it without blinking every time I'm like the baddie, so this is not cool. So uh, they had to give me glasses that every time I was about to shoot a gun, I touched the side and they turned to sunglasses. <laughs> 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 I, mean, oh, oh, I think I'd be better at it now. I don't so want to cut myself out. I had a nightmare on Spider-Man. I'd always go, Psst. I couldn't do that without, without going, making the noise. <laughs> yeah. And the poor sound guy, like, oh, I, I do ten I... webs every scene. The poor sound guy's like, this fucking kid wants to stop going. I did that with an electric gun every time I just go bang. <laughs> and I'm saying bang, like, well, because it's not firing. It's, and the gun just goes, like a little fart. <laughs> I'm like, dude, at least give me some real blanks. But yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, culture alert. Uh, we are heading to the stage for Sienna Miller's upcoming West End performance as Maggie in Tennessee Williams' Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. It opens July 24th, but previews from the 13th. It's at the Apollo Theatre. And this is a, a great cast. It's a great play. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you, you've kind of knocked the play about a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the original version. Tennessee Williams is the original version, but we are modernising it. And our director, Benedict Andrews, is really an author and is, it's not the traditional... We're not sort of flying around with southern accents and hoop skirts. We're, you know, it's... There's a bit of nudity in things like that. <laughs> Woohoo! Tickets for selling, yeah. yeah. The box office yeah. started ringing yeah, already. I think it's just going to be a more, you know, it's, a, it's all about what it is to be human and there's, and it's quite a, well, she's definitely sort of a sexually starved character and it's just quite a raw version. And where are you now? Have you started rehearsing already? We are day nine of rehearsals. In fact, about an hour ago, I was crawling around on the floor about five minutes away being hit with a crutch. <laughs> Not a crutch, a crutch. <laughs> swinging a crutch in my head. <laughs> so nice. a bit delirious, yeah. yeah. But it's still set in the Deep South. It's set in the Deep South, yes. And if people aren't familiar with the, the whole story in, in a nutshell... It's about, uh, it's, uh, this woman, Maggie, is very in love with her husband, Brick, who is Jack O'Connell, and he will not sleep with her. And their fa his father is dying of cancer, and everything sort of implodes on this one night, and she's this desperate, longing, yearning woman and he's an alcoholic, and the dad's dying. <laughs> and it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in Tennessee. It's a big, it's a big gothic no, it's, thing. I, I don't know it? how to condense Tennessee Williams, yeah. because he's a genius, but it's really like a beautiful, magical... Everything comes to a head on this one night, and, you know, we'll all be like, talking like that, and, you know, <laughs> facts, and it'll be good. And this is kind of where you started, Tom, because uh, Billy Elliot was... was that, that was your kind of first thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's where I started, yeah. 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 Give us a twirl. Challenge, challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? A twirl or something, a, twirl. a leap. Oh my god, you said you. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Not a twirl. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Because, Billy, were you in... Because they, they put you in some sort of school. Is that right? Billy Elliot's oh, school? Yes. Yeah, there's old baby me. Um, yeah, no, we went to the Billy school, which was um, very much like your boarding school, a place where terrible things happened. Um, but, uh, no, it was a lot of fun and a, and a really cool time for me, yeah. Mark Wahlberg, have you ever been in a play? Yes. Yes. What in what in doubt mine. He has a background in Dali. Royal Shakespearean Academy as well. And what, what I have you played an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> in fourth grade, William Monroe Trotter, Roxbury, Massachusetts, and I was lovely. Yeah, it was wicked hard. I had a whole speech. It was lovely. Is that the only theatre you've Yes. Ever, yeah. You've yeah. never been tempted? No. I, when I've heard, you know, the, the commitment, the level of commitment, eight, uh, eight shows a week and yeah. that sort of thing, no, it's not... Yeah, I know. And now, tomorrow, are you back in rehearsal tomorrow morning? I'm back in rehearsal. I have to say something. I got an Uber to work the other day. And I normally get the tube, but I got an Uber and, uh, and I got in the car with this driver and I said, how long do we get there? He was really nice. He was like, about 30 minutes. And I was like, why are you talking like that? And he went, I don't know why. Which is, I was like, you're literally doing the accent of the play I'm rehearsing now. He's like, that is so weird. I think I'm psychic. Anyway, we got chatting and he's And he was like, oh, I'm Graham Norton. I thought it was so lovely last week, and I loved that show. And I said, like, well, I'm doing it. Should I see if I can get you in? And he's come. And here he is. <laughs> oh, very good. All right, it's time to meet my next guest. Uh, one is the master of motion capture, who brought to life Gollum and King Kong. The other is the award-winning star of Cheers, White Men Can't Jump, True Detective, and Natural Born Killers. Please welcome Andy Serkis and Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Have a seat. Have a seat too. All very Thanks, welcome. Man. Now, uh, what do you, you spend a lot of time in London now? Are you you're yeah. filming here right now? Yeah, I feel like an expat. I'm, I'm <laughs> living here. Yeah, love it. Because you're filming like the new Han Solo. Yeah, little Andy. Yeah, Han Solo. <laughs> yeah. There you are. 
Andy, is that you in the That's thing? <laughs> <laughs> you must have been if furious. It, if it was him, there'd be a bunch of dots. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, the apes are back. This time it's war. War for the Planet of the Apes opens July the 11th. Now, uh, Andy, obviously you're back in the role of Caesar. So there's you. Yes. And then, ba -dum, it's Caesar. Oh, yeah. How do they do that? Uh, it, 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 I mean, it, you know, I sort of know how they do it, but I don't know how they do it. It is phenomenal. I just watched it uh, before coming here, and it is, it's amazing. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it is. Uh, I'm not saying that in a self-congratulatory manner. <laughs> I'm the least thing in it, but I got to say, uh, so yeah, uh, thanks. I said that hoping you'd say <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I got to say, it, it came together. So Matt Reeves, the director, he's just a master at this, uh, you know, at, at kind of bringing all that motion capture to life. But his performance is astonishing. And you are new to this world, so uh, no. who, who are you in The Planet of the Apes? I play the colonel. I, I apparently am uh, the enemy to Caesar. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's quite, um, yet yeah, humans don't come out of this well in this version. N no, well, nobody comes out of it well. I mean, it's a war, you know, so uh, both apes and humans are, are uh, toe to toe and, and having a bad time of it. So it's, it's, it's basically in, the, in, the, in this story, it's, it's moved on from, I don't know if people saw the last one, Dawn, or in fact the first one, Rise, but it's, um, it's got to a point where uh, there's been a, there, uh, the, the start of the whole saga is a virus which was created through an Alzheimer's drug gone wrong and then an, an, an ape called Caesar becomes enhanced by this in, intelligence enhancing drug and he's brought up with human beings he's then thrown into a facility at the sort of at, the, at a teenage if you like in the other films and then he leads them to freedom and then then the, the a virus breaks out and in this one it, it turns to all-out war between apes and humans so uh, yeah, it's bleak. It's a bleak start to the film, but there's a lot of heart, a lot of emotion in... And uh, listen, we've got a clip. This is uh, the moment when uh, Caesar uh, gets captured and you guys meet. <laughs> now, the two of you, it sounds like you probably got on. Wasn't there, you had a, a night out in Vancouver, was it, the two of you bonded over? <laughs> we, had, we had a number of It was really of a night in. Well, it was a night in, actually. <laughs> yeah, we hung over at my house. We had a couple of bottles of wine. I won't get into the details. <laughs> I think the last time you were on a show with me, you did tell us about a mad night you had in London. And you've now turned it into a film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but again, a mad film. Yeah, mad film. It's, it's called Lost in London. And I, uh, I had this night that was terrible, terrible night. It started with just my wife and I on the verge of breaking up and ended with me in jail. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and did this all happen? This all happened, yeah. and I hated it. I wanted to forget about it, but then I kept thinking, you know, this could be funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Owen Wilson's in, and Willie Nelson, and we shot it in real time, in 99 minutes. Shot it single camera, and live streamed it as we shot it into theaters in the United States and into three picture house theaters here. Uh, in fact, so it's, it's one take? It's one take, yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it, it turned out great. And uh, that's showing at uh, Picture House Central. <laughs> <laughs> Friday and Saturday late night. <laughs> and did anything go wrong? Like, could you only do it once? Yeah, there was sound issues and just the live feed issues. And then on the night, there was uh, this bomb, this World War II unexploded ordinance that they discovered near the uh, Waterloo Bridge, which is a key area. So they shut down the bridge. And I'm like, you know, I've never been a fan of Hitler, but this is personal. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. That was very strange. Opened up like just a few minutes before we <laughs> needed it. Uh, and, uh, and Andy, you've got another movie. You're, you're work you, have you finished Jungle Book now, the motion capture version of uh, Jungle no, Book? No, we're, 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 um, we're still in the process of making it and it comes out uh, next year. So, so it's uh, yeah, an amazing cast and there's a beautiful central performance by a young actor playing Mowgli. Um, it's a much darker version than the Disney one that came out last yeah, year. Yeah. It's a PG-13. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really... In and that's all performance capture, so all the actors, Christian Bale's playing uh, Bagheera and uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is playing Shere Khan the Tiger and uh, Kate Blanchett's playing Car the Snake and they're, and they're all there doing the same kind of thing as you've uh, right. you just seen. So. Are we allowed to mention that you were in? 
about my audition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It was um, often... No, often... We do strange things for auditions, but I think your audition might be the strangest thing <laughs> I've ever been asked. I did... You know, I prepared my lines, I prepared my scene, I went in, I did the scene. He was brilliant. And you said, thank you, that was great. Now do it as a wolf. And I'm like, <laughs> OK. <laughs> so all I did was this. <laughs> Your style. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was a wonderful experience. It was lovely meeting you, oh. and uh, and I saw some of the concept art from the movie, and it looks incredible. I can't mm -hmm. wait for it. Me okay. too. And now, oddly, Mark, you were in Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes back in 2001, oh, yeah. but there was no motion capture in that, was it? No, I, God, I never see Tim Roth so upset after sitting in makeup for five hours and <laughs> kind of stroll in and say, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, put my little astronaut suit on. But um, it, was, it was an amazing experience working with Tim. Uh, I think we kind of set the franchise back a little bit. You and Rupert kind of revived it again, which is great because it was obviously a big uh, intellectual but, property. But you use see. real... Makeup, yes. But no, but real monkeys. Oh, real people. Oh, real the monkeys. Real the monkeys, well, no, they were the worst. They would attack you because they... Helena and I, Helena Bottom Carter and I, had yeah. this relationship, so I had to work with the monkeys as the astronauts, so they wanted us to get acclimated with the chimps, and any time I would go near her, the chimps would start attacking me. and start, like, trying to punch me in the nuts, like, <laughs> like my five-year-old son, like, really bad, like, not stop. Like, okay, all right, stop now. Stop playing around. we got to work. And the chimps were constantly trying to attack me. Because you had a sort of similar <laughs> experience, Andy, at the zoo, didn't you? Oh, that was on, that was on King Kong, yeah. I had, a, I, had a, I had a very... I had a sort of long-standing affair with a gorilla called Zaire about ten years ago, and um, she's a lovely, lovely gorilla. And, uh, <laughs> and, we, and we hung out for, for a couple of months. I was observing her, and we, and we got to, you know, play games and sort of, you know, with each other, and it was all rather lovely. And then... Uh, and then, and then one, well, about That's two months later... That's how it starts. It was, yeah, it was. <laughs> Text, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but, um, but Lorraine, my wife, came down to, to visit. I said, "You've got to come down and meet Zaire." And and and, and when when she came down, literally, Zaire got this bottle of water which has minerals in and and, and vitamins, and, and she just went <laughs> like that and squirted, squirted it right right in Lorraine's face. That's what she did to me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like they do. They get so protective. They really do. Yeah. yeah and territorial. It was like, oh, you're talking about monkeys again? Okay. <laughs> The other thing that chimpanzees do, of course, is a thing called pant hooting, which is a. <laughs> when do chimps do that? <laughs> when they're very excited. <laughs> Is that a happy thing or a sad thing? It's a kind of no. It's it's a kind of territorial thing, of a kind of, and it's quite scary. They're quite, yeah, it's defending territory. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I've heard that sound. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, it is a sofa of actors. So, uh, Andy, <laughs> Andy, are there kind of any, I wouldn't say tricks, but are there any shortcuts into playing a, a, a great ape? A great ape. Um, well, uh, I said a great well, ape. well, well, well <laughs> quadrupeding is a large part of it, OK? So quadrupeding is walking on, on all fours. And uh, I happen to have with me some, um, <laughs> some arm oh, extensions, yeah. which we could, we could all have a go oh, with. All cool. oh, right. And these, in fact... Are, are, are how we quadruped, so we can all have a go, and I think I think we should. And I, would you like to have a go? No, not yet. Well, I've seen, I've seen, <laughs> let me just show you. So these are oh, these. Are, look, and it's got mo motion, motion capture dots on it already, so so we can shoot. Um, so anyway, so you. So let me just. Uh, oh, is, there, is this a good place to stand? Yeah, yeah we're wicked. Well, wherever, wherever, well, okay, okay, wherever, wherever you want to go. Yeah. So so first of all, you, you know, if you're going to get into into being an ape, like yeah. a, like um, if you're a silverback gorilla, then you tend to have your wow. backside spinning out. If you're if you're a chimpanzee, then you, then you're tucked in like this. So you can choose between a gorilla or or a chimpanzee, yes, whichever, yes. whichever you'd like. Yes, of course. Yes. Yes. That's yes. options. I love options. And then you start. Oh, and then you start. Oh, look at that! Whoa! Right? Wow! Ooh, that's like that. That's wow. kind of great. <laughs> yeah. And then, then you can learn to kind of accelerate. And then we're all going to do this. So Seems so so, nice. so, nice. so then you can learn to accelerate. Oh my God! I've got slippers there. I've got very slippery shoes on. But like that. So. Wow, that's very impressive. Time's young. Go on, Tom.
Our fellow method actor. This is for a role of the we next film. Up, by the way, these Brits are. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> You'll be. You're gonna be so good at this. You're gonna be so good at this. <laughs> be fine. You're gonna shine. <laughs> I'm glad I wore such tight trousers today. <laughs> You beat your chest with these things. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a tough one. So hang on. Gorilla is the arch. Back. Oh, that's very. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, 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 look at him. Oh. I've got Spider Man on No, that's seven. very Spider Man. <laughs> and then what did you say chimpanzee was? It was. You've got to tuck, tuck in. <laughs> tuck in with your. Tuck in with your. Tuck in with your. There you go. Oh no, do a wolf as a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have our music. Now, Andy Serkis, uh, I know you are a huge fan of our guest tonight. Uh, so I wondered, would, would Gollum, we're really, sorry, I'm like poking with a stick, but I want to get my money's worth. So uh, <laughs> could, could Gollum introduce oh, this lovely what? singer? Oh, no way. <laughs> do you need to, oh, you need to get physically ready for this? Um, no. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, it's, all, it's all on that, 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 that board, board, over that board down the there. Hole? Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Gollum, introducing our music tonight. <laughs> well, my precious, <laughs> it's time for music, isn't it? No, it's not. Shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, precious. I loved this singer for so many years. No, you did not, precious. I did. <laughs> What's her name, precious? Her name is Addison. It's <laughs> performing uh, the rarest birds. It is Alison Boyer! Of course, uh, it was the rarest birds. The rarest birds was the latest single off your new album, Other, yeah. uh, which is out now. You must be thrilled. It's been so well received, this album. Yeah, it's been bonkers. It's been great. You, yeah. You, 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 you can only, you know, affect your output. You can't, you can't assume that you're going to get anything. And uh, so when it comes back, it's great. Yeah, but this seems like, I was saying to you, this seems like an album that you wanted to do. No one was saying, I think you should go this way, yeah. da, 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 da. Well, to be honest, they're, they're always the albums that I want to do. It's just sometimes I choose wrong, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> you got it right. Every mistake I've got wrong, you know. <laughs> and, and we must say, uh, with trepidation, I suppose, after 30 years, 30 years, you have bitten the bullet and you're going on a world tour. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you... Yes, I... Enjoy that because I feel no, like you I love it. it. I mean, touring is my favorite thing, but I must say that, that even though well, you have avoided it for 30 years, no, no, really no, I, I've, I've done loads of touring, I just haven't gone far afield. You know, <laughs> just this time I thought, you know, it's as good as it's going to get. You know, sooner or later it's going to go, so I might as well, when I'm at the top of my game, my live game, then I might as well do it. And when does it all kick off? Oh, don't ask me, September, I think. <laughs> I think you know, You'll be there. I'll You'll be, be there. there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that, Alison Boyer. Yeah. Right, before we go, we get some time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Uh, Diane. Diane, lovely. And where are you from, Diane? Uh, Narborough in Leicestershire. Lovely. And what do you do? Um, I'm a retail insight manager. <gasps> what does that mean? Um, I do um, DVD release reports and insight reports for um, a lot of the film studios. I'm no wiser. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, many moons ago, I used to um, rent a room in a house with three guys, which had its benefits. Um, but one downfall was somebody used to eat all my food. So on one occasion, I was pouring a bowl of cereal out, <laughs> and there was no fruit in my cereal. It was supposed to be a strawberry fruited cereal. Okay. So I shut the power. <laughs> you got the power. You got the power. It's addictive, isn't it? It's so fun. It's addictive. <laughs> Such a power seat. <laughs> Should we get another one? Should we do another one? Yeah, let's, let's get another one. Yeah. Hello. Hi there. I'm worried there. Ah. Still not me. Yanked out. <laughs> what's, what's your name, sir? Uh, Oliver James. Oh, lovely. Are you sure? Uh, 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 what do you do, Oliver James? Uh, I'm a Brighton Uni. I study wine. You study what? You can do that at university. Yeah. Oh, that's. <laughs> that should not be okay. Can't be a university course, can it? I Isn't take it like it? a sommelier? A sommelier? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Sommelier. Yeah, sommelier. yeah that's sommelier. the one. What's so? Do that at catering college, don't you? A sommelier blanc. Sommelier blanc. Yeah. Some of that. Yeah. yeah. I'll have some of that. Yeah. Uh, should we try one more? Okay, one more. Hello. G'day, Graham. Hello. Uh, what's your name? Sean. 
Sean, and are you an Aussie? I am. Ah, I th I th I'm getting good at this. I, I used to not know. Yeah. Uh, uh, where about Australia? Do you live here now or there? Uh, I live here now. Okay, what do you do? Uh, accountant. Uh, an accountant? What? Yeah. Do you want to ask me what it's about? <laughs> no. At this very address. And that's it for tonight. Please say thank you to my guests, Alison Boyer, Tom Holland, Sienna Miller, Mark Wahlberg, Andy Serkis, and Woody Harrelson. Please join me next week with Bob Goodheim, Oscar winner Jamie Foxx. The hilarious Steve Carell and Christian Wig, and the legend that is Dame Judi Dench. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye.